I'll never forget, I said, I think I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, of course you're not. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, you know I'm not okay? <laughs> <laughs> You guys are here just a little bit early today. I mean, I'm not used to walking in and my makeup's not on for the whole shoot and everything, but we can do these last couple of steps together. And the last couple of steps are really important because when I get up in the morning, I put on eyeliner and mascara even before I go to see my family. I think my family would love me without eyeliner and mascara, but I mean, I put on lashes for you guys. I guess there's just this image of perfection that we think we have to have for other people. We're gonna to talk to a couple of my friends today. One of my friends tried so hard to be perfect, it actually put her in the hospital. And she's gonna tell you how she got there and how she got out. Another one of my friends tried so hard to be perfect. She's a doctor, she's a pastor, she's married to a Grammy Award winner, but still trying so hard to be perfect, she ended up writing a book about it. If you're tired of trying to be but you know you can never be just perfect, and you're ready to rest in who God made you to be, you're in the right place. Today, we're gonna to take you from the pain to the promise in a real and an organic way. Matter of fact, I might even take some of this makeup off. Are you ready? If you are, if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and share. Record this on your DVR. Follow me on Instagram so we can be chatting about it while you're watching. And above all else, go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash Let's Talk. I want to hear what the devil's been telling you needs to be perfect in your life and how you busted through it. Ready? Already snapped. <gasps> Snap. Let's go. Wait, that wasn't perfect. We should probably reshoot it, right? Oh, man. Authentic, free. Mmm, superpower. Prayer. <laughs> yes. I can't sleep with my feet in cover. It makes me feel like I'm suffocating. I say it's because I'm African. I really don't know why. <laughs> Girl, just take it easy. You'll, you'll get there. Made away. <laughs> when you've been outclassed. I am seriously <laughs> outclassed. Uh -oh. My friend is a doctor, a church planner, an author, and a powerhouse Aww. woman. <laughs> you're too, too kind, you're uh, too kind. Fashionista. <laughs> so are you. Looking cute. <laughs> Thank you so much. A lot of fun. Uh, in case you don't know who our guest is today, she has lots of names. Her name is Dr. <laughs> Jackie. Cat is her nickname. Green is her official last name, but she has been adopted in the family. I so. am a crank. Crank. <laughs> Hey, I'm so glad you're here. Married to gospel artist Travis Green. You know, he's kind of cool. I like him. I think we're we going to sing later and show him up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you look perfect. So people would not think Man. that you have had an issue with perfectionism. Oh, a big one. Mm -hmm. And I would just say it was like... It was the thing that stopped my whole world. On the outside, it looked like everything was perfect. Crossed every T, dot every I. Oh, she has the doctor, the great husband. But on the inside, there was this internal war. Mm. I actually heard this guy um, tell my husband one day that my greatest enemy was me. And mm. it was a real hard thing to hear, not trying to be perfect and always really desiring, like loving girls like you who always was just authentically you. If you're loud, be loud. If you're silly, <laughs> be silly. And I would look at people like you, people that would shave their hair or people that would just live out loud and wonder like how did they become this person where they didn't care if they got it wrong I felt like I lived the shame almost mm. the cage and the peril um, the paralysis of wanting everything to be perfect and if it couldn't be that way then I didn't want to do anything and so I didn't ever be myself 
I felt like I really cheated people from actually kind of meeting the real person that I was because I wanted it all to be perfect. So we try to put that just best side forward, mm -hmm. but you were talking about how it paralyzed you. It did, it suffocated, um, I think the best parts of me. So it's like I could put on this perfect conversation and I could walk like the robot and I was the little modelist that was standing beside the great man, but they didn't get to hear my laugh. They didn't hit, mm -hmm. hear my flavor, the salt that I bring to a room, mm -hmm. um, the embrace, the warmth. I never would show it because I might say the wrong thing or I may not get it perfect. And I feel like when I finally like just broke out of there and like just stepped out of the cage. I was finally able to breathe. I was sick of suffocating and um, living behind because I used Travis and my children as my 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 shadow or I would say my um, guard. They kind of like caged me in yeah. to keep the people's opinions away. So as long as I was standing beside the man and I was to help me doing the thing that I was supposed to do as a wife then, I was playing my part. But to step out in front of the camera and stand beside him and actually use my voice yeah. and not live with the muzzle, that was like, oh, you can't, that's unknown territory. You can't do that. But I feel like the moment I did, I gave the women at my church the permission to be able to do the mm -hmm. same thing. I think I tried to fix my life by fixing the exterior. Ooh. And you can't same. fix an internal problem with an external fix. That's so good. And so with the things that happened to me earlier in life, for me to leave the house, I wanted my outfit perfect, my makeup on, my hair fixed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't know if you're old enough to remember Aquanet. Never heard of it. Oh, it was some <laughs> hairspray. I used to glue my hair down before I left the house. Do you, you remember, all in place. You remember in the in the 80s and 90s with the real tall bangs? Are you yeah. old enough for that? Oh, yeah. I had those. They were like this high. Whoa. And I wanted it all put together. But I think it was so people, um, if they got into the inside of me where things were broken, mm. that there would be enough fix that they saw. See, that, now you're coming down my road. <laughs> that they would maybe accept the broken that was on the inside. Absolutely. I love T12, and here's a couple of reasons why. Is every month we learn something different. The month that stands out the most in my mind is the one where we talked about the mind. Because many people don't know this about me. I used to struggle with depression and suicidal thoughts. Mm. And with I've been praying and praying and doing the one yeah. on the mind with, with Joyce Meyer's Battle of the Mind book that you give us a book every single time you give us instruction. It's so amazing what it does to change the way that you think and the way that you feel in things that you could never imagine. If you would have told me even a year ago that I'd be who I am today, I would have told you you're wrong. I love Romans 12 and two. Do not be conformed to this world and all the stress everybody else is feeling, but be transformed, how? by the renewing of your mind. That's why we have come up with the T12 Transformation Program. It's a 12 month total life transformation. We're talking about your relational life. We're talking about your financial life. We're talking about your sex life. We're talking about everything. We go into teaching, reading, Q&A, books, studying. And at the end of 12 months, you have to introduce yourself to yourself because your life is so radically changed. It's a $997 program, but wait. We've had a lot of people partner with us so we can offer it for whatever you can pay. We're invested in helping you have your best year ever. Watch Netflix. What is every morning day in your life? Memorial Day? Oh, memorable. No, it's okay. I was like, what's a memorial day? <laughs> uh, a memorable day would definitely be the birth of my very first son who came eight and a half weeks early, but is amazing today. Chocolate. <laughs> Unconditional love. This, my boys are gonna, they, like, they, they'd be like, mom, come on, you know this answer. <laughs> to be able to know what people are thinking. Read my Bible. Actually, I make coffee, then read my Bible. <laughs> An embarrassing childhood memory. <laughs> when I peed my pants in second grade. <laughs>
got married, some things started to pop up in my life. Like? We had friends coming over, I'll never forget this, uh, friends coming over to the house for dinner. And I was like, a crazy person. Like we had a young baby and I was like, we have to clean every single inch of this house, light the candles, like everything had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And my husband was like, what? Like, I'm like, clean that up, Sh close the, the drawer. They're, they're coming. And he's like, babe, they know we live here. And I think back to that moment and that was a big clue, but I, I didn't even realize it then. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if you can relate, but that's, that's where my world was. I, I think I just, I felt like the appearances mm -hmm. were everything. So if okay. they showed up and I had a blanket on the couch from my baby, yeah. then what are they going to think about me? They're yeah. going to think I'm not a good mom or they don't think I keep a clean house. Or, yeah. So it, it, it was pretty Pretty rough. So how did it go from strict, stringent for you to feel comfortable to deciding that you needed to get help? Well, I think when stress would come in, mm -hmm. when I took on a whole new project yeah. and, and I was trying to do that as well as be a wife, as well as be a mom, that's when things started compounding. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually over an entire building project yeah. and you put a, you put a perfectionist over a building project. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the middle of this building project and I just, I just kind of threw caution to the wind and I was like we're gonna get this thing done we're gonna get it done on time through that time I started working 100 hours a week I just went non-stop and uh, at the end of the building project really my body started to tell me that things weren't okay what what started to happen uh, it was about two weeks after we had first moved into our building and um, at the end of the services, I was just walking. I hadn't done anything. And my entire body started to twist and distort. Mm. And my right leg started to drag behind and my entire spine was curved. Wow. And Matt was like, what's happening to you? He was walking behind me and I was like, I can't feel my leg. I, ca I can't feel my leg. And he was like, sit down, what's happening? I'm like, I don't know. But inside, I just was like, well, just keep going. Mm -hmm. Like, you're okay. Like, I was trying to convince myself that I was okay, but I really wasn't. Yeah. And so my, my, my body was starting to react to this kind of pressure. And so I went to a doctor. Okay. And the doctor said, I don't know how you walked in here. You ever make mistakes? Well, making mistakes is better than faking perfection. I know you've screwed up and I know you're trying to hide it, right? Because like, how could God ever accept you like this anyway? What is God's attitude? What does he think when we keep doing it? You know what he thinks? It's in Psalm 138, verse nine. He keeps every promise he's ever made to us. And since his love for us is constant and endless, we ask you, Lord, finish every good thing that you've begun in us. And I mean, I get mistakes and why you think God isn't gonna accept you the way you are. I mean, after all, if he just knew, if he knew about that foreclosure, if he knew how you couldn't stop spending money, if he knew about that guy or that girl and about that one time and oh, you're so embarrassed. He knows about your go-to pain reliever, <laughs> your comfort food, that stuff you drink, you're not supposed to drink, that stuff you do. He knows how you acted when nobody was looking and he knows how you really feel when you won't even say the word. Here's the thing, life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. It can be a beautiful mess. Nothing like we imagined and happier than we've ever been. An imperfect life is a beautiful life. And we serve a perfect God who forgives everything. Psalm 139 says, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and my soul. You understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You're so intimately aware of me. Lord, you read my heart like an open book and you know all the words I'm about to speak even before I start a sentence. That's the thing about God. He knows how you're gonna say hateful things. He knows how you're gonna do dastardly deeds. He knows how you're just gonna fail. And you know what? Verse five says, you've gone into my future to prepare a way. Prepare a way for me, God, yes, for you. 
and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past, it's not going to get you. He's protecting you from it. He says, you've laid your hand on me. It's too wonderful, too deep, and too incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings wonder and strength. God knows how you are. He created you this way. God knows who you are. He's always wanted you. That's why he made you. Life is not perfect, but with Christ, it's getting better. Give him your permission to work in you. You've been doing this spiritual truth or dare. Yeah. So I figured we'd play a little truth or dare game of our own. Let's go. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, Dr. Jackie Cat Green Crank, <laughs> truth or dare? Dare. Mm. Mm. Your husband is a singer. Mm -hmm. I dare you to sing one of the lines from his song. One of his songs. Which song? Mm. You made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way excuse me i'm sorry travis green <laughs> you're fired we have replaced you with somebody yes! cuter Just <laughs> like, <laughs> i remember one time god told me he gave me the word resist, and he gave me all capital letters of R, E, S, and T. And then the other two letters is rest, is, resist. Resting is inside the word resist. Rest is resisting that urge to get up, pick up, to keep going, to keep yeah. moving on. Um, so how did you end up in the hospital for 11 days? What was going on? And I was in so much pain. They said, I said, is this pain like normal, like why do I feel like this? I have such a high tolerance for pain. Mm -hmm. And he said, your brain is literally sitting on your skull. It's mm. like a hundred pound weight is pulling down on the back of your neck and that's why you're in so much pain. And honestly, those 11 days, as hard as it is, and I know that the enemy was trying to use it for harm. I know he was trying to take me out, mm -hmm. but it was 11 days that I would never trade mm -hmm. for anything because it slowed me down for the first time in my life. So when you went home and started resting, how did you make the connection between what had happened to you in the hospital and your inability to, to rest or that, that urge for perfectionism? I started to remember things that I was thinking in the hospital. And so there were a lot of things in the quiet of that hospital room that started to go through my mind. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was I kept apologizing to everyone. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I can't be a mom. I'm sorry I can't be a wife. I'm so sorry I can't get my work done. I'm so sorry. And everyone kept saying, why are you saying you're sorry? And at the time, I didn't think much of it. But as I started to reflect on that, you know, with the Holy Spirit, it was, there's something broken on the inside of me. Why would I apologize when I was sick? And I, in particular, I remember one moment where Matt was sitting, my husband was sitting by my hospital bed and I had my mask on. And I remember kind of waking up in the middle of a painful episode, but trying to just peek out to see if anyone was in, in the room and he was still there. Mm. And I remember thinking, he still loves me. Mm. And then later I remember thinking, why was I thinking that? Of course he loves me. <laughs> But it was, it was something inside of me that I started to recognize wasn't okay. And I said to my husband, I think I need to tell you some of these really crazy things that I was thinking of in the hospital. And as I started to share with him, as I started to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. probably for the first time, really, with the stuff that was happening on the inside, I'll never forget, I said, I think I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, of course you're not. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait. You know I'm not okay. <laughs> and I think it was honestly the first time that I realized he knows I'm not perfect. Like he knows that there are things on the inside that maybe are going on that I didn't realize. And so it really just sent me on a journey yeah. of self-awareness to figure out what were the things going on inside of me. And, and God just started to unlock places in my heart that I had no idea existed. What 
are some of the freedoms mm -hmm. that you experience today that you wish you had been able to experience prior to being 34? So I think for me, just even the perfectionism, it's being able to actually just say, no, I'm not perfect. I'm actually pointing to the one and only perfect God. Mm. And so it, it doesn't, I don't have to be perfect. I just get to point to him and it just starts to break off some of those chains that have been, that bound me in my perfectionism. Well, I don't know what your thing is. Maybe you don't struggle to be perfect. I'm, I'm hearing what, what Sarah's saying and I'm hearing it echo in parts of my life. If I know company's coming, I'm, you've never seen how much cleaning you can do in 10 minutes around this place, you know what I'm saying? So I'm hearing parts of that, that echo in my soul, and I'm sure you are too. And what we're not trying to do is point out your faults. We're being your friend, we're coming alongside of you, and we're saying, hey, if this is an area that you're struggling in, this is how Sarah found victory through Jesus, and we want you to find that same victory. Wow, Circle of Friends has changed my life completely. And you like it? I love it. You love it? I love it. Why it's helping me. It? One, because it's helping my growth. And so Circle of Friends is a treat. And it's just making me grow so much. It's gonna make me cry. It just inspires me and keeps me fulfilled in the Word of God. It just drives my faith deeper and deeper. So I thank you guys. When we go out in public, we gotta put on our fake face, be nice, dress up, act right. But when we're not around our friends, <laughs> but when you're with your friends, you can be comfortable. That's why I wanna invite you to be a part of my circle of friends. I'm gonna have coffee with you on a private Zoom call with people like Christine Kane, Lisa Bevere, plus a monthly teaching from me. And I'm gonna send you a quarterly resource for free. And you're gonna get all of these discounts on everything else that we do. If you wanna get in the circle, go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle. Let's be friends. How did you finally figure out that it was okay to stop trying to be perfect? Man, I wanted the true part of me. Like, mm -hmm. it was way more than um, the perfect outfit. I mm -hmm. wanted people to know that I loved Will and that I cared about mm -hmm. them, that I saw them, that there was more to me than what I looked like on the exterior. I started doing some internal work, and there was something that I said, you'd have to do the internal work necessary to get to this outward motion or this outward person that you really want to personify. Mm -hmm. And I started digging. It, it took a lot of crying, a lot of mm -hmm. days in my bedroom mm -hmm. by myself facing this stuff that I didn't really like or I didn't want to see. And as a result of doing it, I got to the place where I was like, this girl is pretty okay. Like, maybe you should present her. Well, but the Bible says mm. that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Let me ask you this, the motive behind your perfection. Mm. Once that changed, could you see the fruit in your life change? Absolutely. I started to see people see my brokenness, but draw to it. Mm -hmm. The thing that I thought was gonna be so unappealing was the thing that people would say, like, I love that you don't get all your words perfect, or I love that even when I was starting to, you know, pastor, my husband had done it for so long, I stepped into the role of pastor, really learning how to do it on the stage. It was like, experience my be was my best teacher, and I talked really fast, I sh my voice shook, and my leg would shake on the podium, <laughs> and all of these things, but I think it was all of those things not being buttoned tight that made girls say, like, that girl, Right there, she's real and she's okay with it. And it promoted people being okay with just being who they are. Because what part of real life is perfect? You have a book called Permission. I do. So what made you write that book? I people please for all of my life. I still fight with it. It's, I always say I'm a recovering um, people pleaser where I wanted everybody to be okay with Jackie and I was gonna make sure everything was perfect. And I got to the point where it didn't get me anywhere. I was I was paralyzed by I, the what ifs. Like, what if I do this or what if I say that? And one day I started to feel like I had to break out of this cage. And as I started doing the process, I was starting to see me kind of like step out there and be more bold and I wanted to share the story because I knew what it was like to feel like you were suffocating on your own words. Mm -hmm. I knew what it was like to have played the part, look perfect and go to bed crying because I feel like I didn't, I didn't show who I really was. And mm -hmm. I felt like I tell people all the time that free people, free people. And it's yeah. a disservice to actually gain freedom from the father, allowing you to gain the ability to speak and not actually show people how he did that for you. And so I just wrote down my true thoughts about mm -hmm. 
taking it all off, giving up on, you know, adding to your life and trying to get it all perfect. And I just, I put it all out there for other people to be able to gain from it, glean from it, and be able to step into that for themselves. The enemy wants us to believe that God, our spouses, our friends, nobody's gonna love us if we don't have it all together. Nobody was created to be perfect but Jesus. We're never gonna measure up and be perfect. But here's the thing, we have permission not to be. Not being perfect is okay. There are none perfect, no, not one, just Jesus. God loves you where you are, on the way to where you're going. It's okay, actually, to even celebrate where you are today. You might not be where you wanna be, but you sure aren't where you used to be. And God's gonna take you the rest of the way. If you know somebody struggling with perfectionism, somebody in this deep hole and they don't know how to get out, we can help you. All you have to do is share this episode. Let us do the heavy lifting and you can just come behind and pray with them. You know, that's why I was really excited when Kelsey DM'd me on Instagram. She sent me her testimony. She said, hey, I've been fighting for a long time and I was losing. Matter of fact, I felt like I couldn't live anymore. I found your show and you breathed life into me. You breathed excitement into me. You let me know that I could live again, that I might be weak, but he is strong. And that's what you do when you partner with us. I want to invite you to partner with us. It's super simple. You just go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash donate. Your five, twenty, fifty, hundred dollars every month makes a huge difference. We can give out the high God books in Cuba. We can give out the high God books in prison. We can give out the high God books to people in recovery programs. We can give out the high God books free to anybody who asks through the circle of friends. You as partners pay for the books. They just pay for the shipping. It's a coaching and mentoring partnership group. And if you want to just donate to the show, you put this show on in the Philippines, in Australia, in Pakistan, in Sweden, in Europe, in Africa, in the U.S., and we're actually going on in Costa Rica. You make a lot of ministry happen. You let people know they don't have to be perfect because Jesus died because they weren't. And they can live and be proud of who they are in Him. You know what? I want to pray with you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every one of my friends. We might not be what we want to be. We might not look how we want to look. But you look at us and you love us. Because you don't just see the outward appearance, you see the heart. God, touch their hearts. Touch their minds. And let them know they're beautiful inside and out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I have church, so at some point I'm going to have to put my makeup back on. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Turn, smile. You have a little bit on the top left. It's a black back. One more maybe. Did she get it? I just saw it. Yeah. They are totally gonna put this in the credit. <laughs> I just realized we're already rolling. I'm trying to get my blood pump. I've been sitting in this chair since 11 a.m. this morning. I'm ready to move. Girl, you're um, awesome.